because this, uh, I mean, this knowledge, we, I mean, give it to students for four years. So can you breast four years in 20 minutes? I don't know. Uh, I'll try. I'll do my best. <laughs> uh, at, at least keys or uh, introduction, some figures, some outlines. Uh, uh, we have, I mean, different things here. If we want to look, economics is more than, I mean, the big ocean. Banking and finance, narrow river, all right? So I will go from the ocean to the river. But let's first of all take an idea about what is Islamic economics generally, an introduction. It's not easy to understand in a couple of minutes, but yeah, I mean, it's just an introduction, all right. If we can imagine the Islam totally, we have different systems within Islam. We have social, we have political, we have juridical system, we have also economical system. So there is more than that, of course, but generally speaking, one of these systems is economics. Within this, the economic system, we have different components. We'll talk about some of these. Zakat, alms, endowment, investment, finance, more and uh, more, more, uh, other uh, components as well, charity, donations, so and so. So we have two points here. If we, we will find that all these system within the framework of Islam, number one, most of these systems connected to other systems. So you will find some of these elements directly using social benefit or giving social benefit some benefit and uh, vice versa with other systems. So you can't say you may use one of these elements in non-Islamic environment. You may. You could succeed or not. No, no problem. But to be complete, I mean, get complete results, you should have Islamic environment. Nevertheless, you can start with one of these systems or elements to reach the whole system. So this is the reason how the Islamic banks started in Islamic countries. We don't have Islamic environment, totally economics, social, juridical, all system. This is my idea. We don't have complete system. But at least we have, in some countries, some of the economics we have, other countries we have some social Islamic teachings, maybe. All right, let's go more after that. So in short, what's the component of Islamic economics? Is it's only investment? Only finance? Only zakat? No, more than that. If you wanted to talk about economics, Islamic economics, i.e. alms, zakat, physical policy, yeah. Development, environment, endowment, investment, Finance, donation, trade, so and so, charity, labor, controlling, i.e., controlling the market, and other components. So it's unfair to say, for example, in Syria that, before revolution, uh, in Syria that the charity is well in Syria, so the economic system, Islamic economic system in Syria is successful. It's unfair. Because most of the components, what about the finance? What about the trade? What about the labor? So if you wanted to talk about Islamic economics, you should take in your account all of these components. If you wanted to talk about only investment, this is the, another story. OK? All right. <coughs> because I have short of time, I'll take only outlines. If we wanted to talk about characteristic of Islamic economics, we have different bases, different basics, different principles. Uh, some of them, man, man is Allah's caliph on earth, and he should obey this function, if you can say, this, his job, to, for one purpose, 
to build the earth. He can benefit and build the earth. So, and his duty is to participate in building every aspect of life and bringing prosperity by using natural resources on earth. One of these principles. Another one, man's mandate is to exploit what he was debuted for. You should work. I'm rich, no need to work. You should work. Otherwise, alms will cut your money off, will take from your money. You should invest. I'm a multi-billionaire, you should invest. You have another duty to the, your family, your society, so and so. You have a duty to do. Anyway, work for gain and survival is a means to supreme uh, end, which is, again, building the earth. Richness and poverty are not the criteria for gaining or losing civil, social, and human rights. We are talking about Muslim states. Nobody mentioned here Muslim society. Nobody mentioned here Muslim, Muslims are non, and non-Muslims. We're talking about the Islamic state. So every single person has the right to gain, or to ha he has a right, rights, civilian rights, social rights, and human as well. I have, we have another basics, or basis, ethical. It's a lot of ethics, but we can all, also Maybe some of you, maybe he, I mean, take a cert different certificate nowadays. They're giving in economics, they're giving ethics, like CFA, MBA, um, CBA, uh, all of these, I mean, professional certificates. One of these modules in these certificates, economics one, they're talking about ethics. So not only in Islamic economics we have ethics, in most of recent economics teachings. So some of these ethics, control, behavior, preventing damage to others and to oneself, independence of others and uh, banning of begging, uh, uh, and this seek, uh, the seeking of lawful gain, so and so. It's many, I mean, long list. This is just one or two examples of ethical basis. Another characteristic, we have legislative basis. This included in Quran and Sunnah. It's easy to read, easy to, to point out, easy to understand. So we call it legislative basis. And we have general basis which is you can understood. You can clarify, you can negotiate that we could benefit so and so. Some of these uh, general basics, combining consentences and development, combining material interest and spiritual demand, combining public and private interest, we talk about it in one minute, and we're talking about social security by wider application of the rule, love for others, what you would love for yourself. General basis. Specifically in public and private, Interest, we have the basic of ownership. Anyone of you who study economics, maybe he came with this dilemma, is it private economy or, I mean, by, uh, private uh, uh, useful or public useful, private market or public market. Here in Islamic, if he, this is the circle of, could be circle of public, Benefit, within the public benefit, if it's lawful from Sharia point of view, from Islamic point of view, to gain money, so it's according to Sharia number one, you have the right to own whatever you like, how much you like. So nobody against richness, no at all. Some of Muslims, they believe that richness is against religion. They should read more and more. So, if is it from compliant to Sharia to own any money, any any uh, uh, assets, uh, any rights, 
So you have two things only to be aware of that. Whatever you like. Don't touch the other benefit. And be careful, don't touch the public benefit. Don't touch your, your neighbor benefit. Be careful, he has the right. And don't, don't touch the street, the public benefit. Otherwise, you are free to do whatever you like. So this is, in short, what is the ownership. OK. Um, I, I'll go fast more and more. Uh, so we don't have time. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, we have mo many, I mean, bases talking about what you can do and you, what you can maybe do and what you shouldn't do, okay? Generally speaking, how the Islamic economics enforce the poverty. And Islamic economics, although we believe in the poverty, it's a real. We believe that God gave her, but not me. We believe in that. It's not in my hand, neither in hers. But we believe also how to fight poverty. By what? One element. This is one element. But this is the last element to use. We have many elements before that. Let's, let's start. Uh, who who studies economics? None of you? All right. Um, one of these economists said, the natural resources goes, goes very fast, uh, I mean, very slow. And the public, I mean, the population of the earth going very fast. In his mind, we, have, we should kill poor people. Kill poor people. They are useless. He's non Muslim, of course. <laughs> Hopefully, none of the Muslims believe him. <laughs> All right. How we, how we really narrow the poverty in the society? One of these elements, you should work. You should work. Don't ask for help before trying to work. You are aware of that. Poor, one of the uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi companion came to him, I don't have anything. He go back home and bring anything. He brought some, some uh, kind of, um, I mean, wood or something. So he went to the market, sell it and buy a hammer. And go to the jungle or whatever it is and start working before asking help. So first of all, you have to work. Number two, we have a verse in the Quran. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا It's a real, if we can call it, Sufism, but he will help you by economic resources. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا The sky will give more rains. From, as an economist, how can I can understand this verse in Quran? Accountability. What I have done to myself and to the society. How, did I help people? Did, was I against social responsibility? Kind of accountability. Nevertheless, if you don't believe in that, just leave it. We have another element. Work. Help from relatives. Help before zakat, before reaching zakat, just a help. Loan, whatever it is. We have more than that. After would go to the government, not at the first stage. And you have the right from the state to have help. In fast, you can ask from free interest loan. You can ask for present kind of resources. You can ask for superfluous, anything extra from the society. You can benefit from that. We can ask atonement, kind of paying for forgiveness against sins. 
وي هاف هوسبيتاليتي وي هاف اندومنت وقف وي هاف دونيشن ات ذا لاست ستيج يو كان اسك فور ذا كات سو هاو تو بريفنت بافرتي وي هاف مور ذان ذات ذيس اليمنتس بات ان شورت سم اوف ذيس اليمنتس هاو وي بريفنت بافرتي وي دونت ونت اني بادي تو بي بور ان ذا سوسايتي باي وات باي كيلينج ذيم نو باي هيلبينج ذيم اول رايت Let I I wanted to go fast a little bit. Some goals of Islamic economics: safeguarding religion and Islamic values. I think you are aware that many of these candidates in Europe and in the States, United States of America, they usually use the values when they when they need an election. I mean. So the values everywhere, everybody ask about it. But specifically, Islam came to safeguard the following. Number one, religion, life, mind, offspring, and wealth. So one of the tools we should safeguard, one of the assets, We should safeguard its wealth. You'll be accountable in the hereafter if you if you believe in that. You will be accountable. Where is your health, wealth? From where you gain it? How you spend it? Okay. Another of I want to go f- uh, fast a little bit. Uh, here I I wanted to stress here. In development, we have many concepts in Islamic economics, mainly this one, the most important kind of investment in the human body, in the human man, in the people. This is the real investment we believe in it. And this is the same results came to the recent economic school, many of them. We talk about ownership. Ah. Um, is there anything to write here? Is that available? Let's pick up. I mean, sorry. You want to stand? You don't have to stand. Okay, no problem. Uh, how we, we use time in Islamic economics and in other economics. Time alone is not available. Alone. Time with asset You deserve extra money. We call it profit. Again. Time with no asset in loan, we call it interest. Not allowed in Islamic economics. Time plus loan plus asset, you can ask for profit. Why? because you use the asset during the time. This is in short, all right? So time alone doesn't count as a money. This is why sometimes, what's the difference? This is, I can get credit from this bank, the result I can buy a car, this is conventional bank, and this is Islamic bank, the same. I can buy a car, okay? You don't know the philosophy behind that. The procedures, how they write it before, back door, how they treat it, you don't know, okay? So function of money, we don't invest in money. We invest by money. We invest by money, okay? Right, it's a long story of Islamic economics, but I came here, I wanted just to give general outlines. Here, we'll go specifically to Islamic banking and finance because most of the questions appear in this field because, I mean, the media is very famous in the media. Nevertheless, we have very strong zakat industry, alms industry. We have very strong waqf endowment industry worldwide, specifically in Islamic states, even in non-Islamic. I think if you are aware that most of the, the top tens Um, um, uh, uh, university worldwide, 
maybe the majority of them, they are charities. They are charities. They are, or, or, or endowment, I mean. Endowment. They are waqf. Endowment. Just name it. Oxford, Harvard, so and so. They are endowment. Waqf. They are, they have, they are working with billion dollars. So it looks like the same system in Islamic economics, but because it's not famous in our area here very much, here the most famous is Islamic banking and finance. What is Islamic banking and finance? The people, Muslims and non-Muslims, they are very famous these days. We wanted to bank in Islamic way. So this lady, um, during the demonstration in Greece, she heard about Islamic, Islamic banking. She wanted to bank in the Islamic way. I don't know if she, she understands what Islamic way or not. This is the reason we need a new element. If somebody asks you what Islamic bank is, it's a new element. Nothing to do with Muslims. It's a new element in economics. Take it or leave it. That's it. All right? So let's try the, the new way. Right. This is a new way. It's very narrow. In Kuwait, maybe in Saudi Arabia only? No. Let's talk about it. It's very fast. In GCC countries, the most, I mean, the most famous, um, let's say, banking country, Islamic banking countries is Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, just started in Oman. Long time, nothing Islamic in Oman, just one year ago, they, I mean, um, they have an act or resolution for uh, uh, organizing Islamic banking and finance. Uh, so we have Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, Emirates, started and we call it GCC countries market, Islamic markets. It's really a market. This is number one. Number two, let's go to most famous, uh, the second or maybe the first most famous, Malaysia. Very strong in Islamic banking and finance. Because we, be, we believe, we organized here in Kuwait um, um, three days conference uh, about, about the, the, the experiment of Islam, uh, Islamic banking in Malaysia. We discovered after three days that it was the governmental support. So the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Malaysian market is, in Islamic banking is very strong. They have a lot of sukuk, i.e. Islamic bonds. We talk about it later. So this is number two. Maybe number three in Europe. We have, we have competition between Mayor of Paris and Mayor of London to make their cities hub of Islamic banking. All right? They need it to be hub of Islamic banking. So generally speaking, this is different school of Islamic banking. We have in every single area just say, in India they have, in China they have, in Germany, in North Africa, in South Africa as well. In Kenya they have, of course in Middle East, in Russia, in Moscow, in Japan. I've been attending in Japan many times, no, sorry, many schools of business. I traveled just once, many schools of business. I discovered after my, I finished my lecture that the people, three students, they are writing their PhD in Islamic banking and finance. In Korea as well, I've been in Seoul many times, four times, three or four times. Many of these people writing research, studying what is Islamic banking and finance. Just mention, just mention it, all right? In Australia, just started, let's go here. I have no idea about um, South uh, America, I don't know. Uh, North America, they run funds worldwide. They, have, they are very excellent in uh, fund management, but they don't have local, fully-fledged Islamic bank. No, they don't have. The city bank is talking about it. Talking. Fully-fledged Islamic bank? Not yet. Hopefully, it will be soon. Maybe companies could be. Small uh, investment companies could be, but fully-fledged bank? No. In Canada, also people trying and trying. This is, in short, in every way you can find either fully-fledged bank or we call it Islamic window. In conventional bank, we, co we could find Islamic fund, we could find any product, takaful, i.e. insurance, 
in every single area. Let's go faster. One of the attractive of this industry is the growth, the percentage growth annually in this industry. It's unbelievable. Just a couple of years, let's say 93 up to 2010. Can you believe this growth, regardless of the number? This is what attracts the professionals. What they are these people selling? If you can compare between growth of global uh, banking assets, Islamic and conventional, per year, for example, this is non-Islamic, conventional, although it's a huge, it's not small, you know, because this is globally non-Islamic. It's a huge, it's not small. But can you compare it with this number? It's a huge, you know? So here in GCC countries, still the growth, it's a huge. Here, for example, in Kuwait only, regardless of the number, look to the growth. This is what attracted the economist and banker to come here and what you are doing, man. <laughs> all right. For example, another area, you always in GCC countries, go to another country for Jordan. In the same, in the same year, look at this growth, Islamic, non-Islamic and foreign country, uh, banks. We want to understand. This is one of the reasons why CIA every single year came to Kuwait to search with a transparent action House of Zakat in Kuwait. We wanted to understand what you are doing, man. A huge amount income and outcome. From where? So to be transparent, it's kind of business. And another, I mean, indications. And this is compliant fund, i.e. compliant Sharia funds worldwide. Compare it, started 2003, just 200. Unbelievable. If you wanted to compare it with conventional, it's nothing. Nothing. But during the period, it's very huge. Here you're talking about the fund under management. It's a huge per year. Funds per year, new Islamic per year, it's a huge. Um, Sukuk, i.e. Islamic bonds. Um, we don't have time to compare between bonds, Islamic bonds and non-Islamic bonds, but of course we can understand why the drop here during the uh, issue of Sukuk returned back again. And uh, uh, this is one of the, I mean, um, uh, indications. Uh, why the people ask always what you are doing, man, Islamic Bank. Okay, in short, um, how much time I have? Okay, uh, if we can take just two charts to summarize the differences between Islamic and non-Islamic bank. Practically, in short, usually conventional bank, intermediary, between debitors and investors. They call it that. Debitors. Debitors. Investors. So the people debt their money with the bank. Practically, they lend it to the bank from low view of point. They lend it to the bank. With, sorry, this is in Arabic, with a percentage determined by the central bank. And we call it investors, actually lenders from the bank, with a percentage determined by the central bank. So the benefit of the intermediary, the, the difference between two percentage. What about the Islamic bank? What is doing? Okay, Islamic bank. He's a partner, sharing risk, sharing profit and loss between debtors. We call them partners. They wanted to share the risk with the bank. I will put my money with you. If you lose, I will lose. If you gain, I will gain. With expect... Oh, 
Very good. <laughs> With expected percentage. Expected. You cannot say, I will give you 10%. I'm expecting. I don't know. Maybe I'll gain more. Maybe I'll gain less. Right? The same with investors. The partner of the bank here will invest with the investors if they lose or gain. The same situation. And expecting gains as well. So this is in short. What is the structure, the framework of the Islamic bank and an Islamic bank? All right. Um, this is one termination of what is it? Like a financial institution using money according to Sharia fundamentals. I don't want to go to the riba. What kind of riba? Rules of exchange. Okay. We don't have enough time. Okay. All right. This another chart showing us how the Islamic banks work. The doctors, they have a contract either mudaraba. We'll explain that later kind of partnership or we call it agent okay the same so he gained the money and the sh before that sorry we start from shareholder the shareholders they put the entity the islamic bank entity different than the shareholders of course so they have a contract between them either agent wakala or mudaraba mudaraba she has um, the money i have the experience she will give me the money i will work with it we share the net profit. Net. So partnership in the net. So first of all, to retain the capital, then we'll talk about the net profit. If there is no net, she lost her capital, I lost my work, my efforts. We call it mudaraba. Mudaraba, okay? So here, shareholders, the contract between them, either agent or mudaraba, wakala or mudaraba, the same with debtors, then the pool of investment here can go to different sharia compliant contracts with clients. Right? Right. Uh, ah, maybe here we have very, I mean, good quotation. Ayudovich, an American economist. We call him Yudovich or Odovich. I'm not sure about pronunciation. Um, he's talking about the Islamic financial system in the history. Was there any system in the history, if uh, Islamic history looks like financial system? This economist, he said, the widespread use of fairly explain, explained type of credit methods in the economy of Islamic world has been a recognized fact for three or four centuries before appearing anything in Europe. So approximately, these banks worldwide started two, more than 200 years ago. So he said four or five, three or four centuries, even before that, they were a very excellent financial system at that time in the Islamic history. Anyway, and he ends, he said, furthermore, the development of the banking and quasi-banking activities in Iraq, for example, in the 10th century was an admirable phenomenon. Okay, so there was a system, but of course, not a bank, not a depositors, but kind of system. I will take, um, this is what is mudaraba. We talk a little about murabaha. I will finish murabaha. I don't want to stress more for today. This is just only introduction. Also, we talk a little bit about mudaraba. We we'll talk about another one famous also in Islamic bank called murabaha. Murabaha. Markup sale. Markup sale. This is the simple one. I don't want to talk about it. The, the more advanced. We call it murabaha for purchaser demand. For example, he wanted to buy a car, all right? He don't have cash, he don't prefer, even if he has a cash, he prefer to buy it through the bank because of the experience of the bank, all right? He will go directly, the client will go directly to the trader. 
asking for a quotation. I wanted to buy a car by an Islamic bank. Give me a quotation. So the trader will give him the quotation and he will go to the Islamic bank presenting this quotation, asking him for finance. So they will negotiate for the principles and sign MOU. Memorandum of understanding. This is not a contract. This is a promise to buy. A promise to buy. Mentioning that the bank telling the customer, if I bought it, you should come and buy it from me. This is the MOU. The step number one. Or the deal number one, if you can bought it. Or the step number one. Afterward, the bank or his agent will go to the trader asking for the same goods or asset or whatever it is according to the quotation. I need to buy from you so and so. And he will own it. The bank will own it, will be the owner, real owner. Okay, this is step number two. Afterward, he will ask the customer to come and buy the goods from the bank. And this stage, he will sign Murabaha contract. Promise, ownership, sailing. Promise, no one burden anything. Ownership, the bank burden the risks. So he deserves the profit. Ownership. If it's lost, he will lose his money. If it's burned, he will burn his money. So he, in this system, he deserves it. Deserves the difference between the actual, I mean, the, the actual price and the selling price. So this is, in short, what is Murabaha? And there is, I mean, many stages for Murabaha as well. Uh, we have, just to go through the slides in fast, we have another kind of uh, 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 cash financing, we call it Tawarruq. We have another contract, we call it Organized Tawarruq, uh, sell, uh, buying, um, uh, uh, buying goods from international uh, markets. And we have um, uh, kind of another Musharaka, uh, we, work with work, cash with cash, and as we mentioned, cash with work, we call it mudaraba. We have, for uh, rural sector, we have different contracts. We have muzara'a, we have mugharasa, and we have musaqat, crop sharing, and planting of trees, and nursing of trees, kind of partnership, musharaka. Uh, and we have participation ends with ownership. You need to buy a house, you don't have enough cash, so you will participate with the bank and he will, you will pay from the return of this asset. You will buy it in portion from your partner. We call it partic uh, participation uh, in, in, with ownership. With, we have degrees, another one, decreased partnership. You own an asset, you want to develop this asset. You need more cash or more money. So the bank will come and be your partner. And I think this is um, deferred, deferred payment basis. We have different also contracts. I'm sorry, um, a lot of information, a lot of questions, a lot of pressing. <laughs> uh, so this is just um, a, a, a narrow open of the gate of Islamic economics. Uh, uh, thank you for your patient, and uh, I'm ready for any questions. This is a very interesting topic to me personally because um, being from the United States, I witnessed the crash of the economy, the failing of the banking markets, and it seemed like the Islamic banking was the only one that survived. And this is what caused the Western banks and economists to re-examine the Western the Islamic banking system, and I know what it is they're afraid to tell the people 
they've been wrong all this time that Islamic Sharia complains. Thinking it doesn't, it's not an Islamic principle per se, it's a human principle. It goes back to investing in the people and the interest of the people and the environment and it's very moralistic and it's probably the reason why because it has a level of God principles that are associated with it and it's been the most successful and you know even in the Bible before capitalism took over America interest was considered usury and anyone who indulged in interest would go to hell. This was in the Bible prior to capitalism taking over the world. And the good thing about Islamic banking is it forces the person to get what they can afford. Most Americans live off debt and live off credit. Even the U.S. itself is very much in debt because of credit. Most Americans are two paychecks, if they even nowadays can get two paychecks. When the economy was good, we're two paychecks away from being homeless. And this is why many people lost their houses, because banks would lend these people money, with the, uh, housing with money they couldn't afford. Their job, their salaries didn't match the mortgage payment. So when they lost their job, they couldn't keep their house. So like the thing that um, that's interesting about this concept is the reason why you have Western companies and, the, and the investors and economists looking into it because they're like, how can um, banks survive without using the people, charging them interest and taking advantage of them and giving them loans that they know they can't afford that, you know, is the reason why we're in the economic crisis right now. But my concern is that, like in Kuwait, for example, only there are very few Banks here in the Muslim country actually use these principles. Like I know Kuwait Finance is an Islamic Sharia compliance bank, but there are some banks here that aren't, and you said Oman just started it. So I'm wondering now if this has been proven to be one of the most successful banking systems in the world. And even non-Muslim countries, even countries that don't really have any Muslims, like Japan rarely has any Muslims in it, and other countries are looking into this, then how come some of the Muslim countries are not as, you know, are not upholding these Islamic banking principles with all the banks, not just a few, but all the banks in the Muslim countries. Why aren't some of them all of their practices? I actually, first of all, I'll be, uh, I was in uh, Purdue University in the States and Kilogu School of Management. I talked about that. I'm mentioning that um, instead of, I was 2008, I think, or 2009, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, in the middle of the crisis, I told them, we believe in Islamic economics if you wanted to survive exchange between debts and assets. You wanted to solve your problem, reduce your debts by using more assets. Reduce assets, tangible assets. Can you believe that 2008, the global GDP of the Earth was $55 trillion. $55 trillion. Global GDP of the Earth. Okay. At the same year, the derivatives market only, just name it, how much was? Five hundred sixteen trillion dollars. Five, one, six. Derivatives, i.e., derivatives. It's money, paper. You can buy and sell it against. It used to be against assets, but not anymore. So, in real, they are buying and selling what? Papers. Papers. Nothing. So even Obama, when he said, "I wanted to solve the crisis." He injects $700 billion to the same people, to the same banks, with the same way. What's the new? At least to restructure it by using more tangible asset, we call it in economics. So at that stage, this is not only relating to Islamic and non-Islamic. We, we have a duty to share the earth crisis. I was preparing um, uh, an article to share in Greece um, international economic conference, but I couldn't reach that. I was, I have 
my problem here with the university time, no time. I, we, we have all of us to share in any crisis worldwide because according to globalization, what happened at the end of the earth will affect you. And you have a role to share the, the human being, whatever they are. So, See, the problem we is they can't be truthful to the people. No, no, uh, they, the problem, they don't listen very well. No, the, our media is controlled by Zionists, and the US, Israel is like, kisses Israel, I mean, the U.S. kisses Israel's butt so much that they can't be honest to the people and be like, listen, this is the way our country can come out of that using Islamic Sharia principles, but because they demonize the word Sharia for so long and our Zionists control media and they lie to the people for so long, for them to come back and tell the people the truth about the fact that all this time they have been using the people, they've been lying to the people, and they've been cheating the people, it's something, it takes a big leader and someone to really humble themselves and stop giving all this money to Israel and give back to the people. And this, I remember reading in an article in Middle East Magazine, um, Sheikh said from Dubai, the best investment of a nation is in its people. And even there was a sheikh that came from the states that said out of all the countries in the world, the Gulf countries give back to their people. They even give back to people who are not even from, who are not even citizens of the country. I mean, the benefits that you can get from a non-interest loan, you know, you're able to actually pay it off. You're not in debt until after you die. And that's what most Americans are living in, debt. Even the Zionist people, why not to invest Islamically? Hmm? I don't mind. If they wanted to invest, just come. It's a way to investment. It's not against any human being. You want to be more rich, try this way. You will yourself gain benefit and the society. They don't want it. That's the system. <laughs> anyway. Muhammad, let's go back to that uh, car example that you used in the bank. Now, suppose the bank and the customer made a, what you call a contract. And the bank went to buy the car. And the customer, was, for some reason, could not. This is an open gate. Some, I mean, some regulation. Uh, let me here mention an important issue. If the central banks doesn't arrange the market, even if we, we have Sharia scholars in Islamic banks, it will not successful. It will not succeed. We have to have very strong and solid regulation from the central bank. Because from Sharia point of view, if you wanted to, I mean, enforce him to buy it, you have the right. And if you don't want to enforce him, you have the right. It's an open gate. Two opinion, it's in, in, in fuck. Uh, for in Sudan, they. No, I'll give you an example. In Kuwait, you have to buy it. If is it, if is it, unique, unique asset. If is it normal car, if you don't want it, okay, no problem. I'll sell it to another one. No problem. So it's, but is it a very unique airplane, for example? You have to buy it. What so shall I do it? Really taking any risk in no. Usually, even before calling you, sometimes, I mean, the huge ship will dive in the ocean, just a couple of minutes, even before calling the customer. No, no, I'm talking about the car. The car is still there in the dealer showroom, and the guy did not want to buy it. I'll tell you, I just bought a car a couple of um, months ago, okay? It happened as, as follows. Uh, I went to Kia garage, I get a quotation, I went to Kuwait Finance House, ask them for such a car to finance me. They first of all, the same what I explained here, yeah. first of all ask about my will. I have enough so and so, enough banking. After all they said, okay, now I'll buy the car from Kia company. Okay, Mohammed? I said, okay, okay, contact in front of me. He is as agent of Kuwait Finance House, contact Kia company. According to the statement or quotation, you have such kind of car, such kind of price, so and so, we in Kuwait Finance House, we need to buy this car. So they knew each other. Okay, I know you, Mr. Ahmed, no problem, I'll, I'll sell it for you. Okay, Kuwait Finance House bought it. 
Okay, okay, bye. We, we will confirm it later on by exchanging between them. I don't, I'm the customer. Exchanging contracts. So if he can come to me later in the same time and position, Mohammed, Kuwait Finance House bought the car. Do you want to buy it? If I said, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Bye-bye. I bid nothing. How he can enforce me? Nothing. But the bank didn't buy it. Usually, no, he bought it already. He cannot say, I, I, I changed my mind. No, he bought it. Otherwise, he destroyed his, what we call it? Reputation. Reputation. I'm not blaming. So how are the banks protected? But usually, this is the case with the cars. But for example, a huge shipment. The case is different. Commodities. Commodities. Yeah, I was asking you earlier about the Islam. Like, how come all the banks in Muslim countries don't exercise the Islam? Um, are they exercising the whole other teachings? Are they exercising the whole other teachings? No, I was told not every... What about the social? Are they exercising it? <laughs> it's the same economics. Yes, please. Uh, we engineers, sometimes we have a uh, project evaluation. And mm -hmm. we wanted to evaluate whether an investment is worthwhile or not. <laughs> so I guess what we use sometimes, we call the present and future value and discount rate and stuff like that. How does the Islamic financing deal with that situation? Projected profit, for example, or we can, money growth. For time being, we use the labor. We don't have, I mean, labor. You know labor? Interbank, mm. interest rate, so rating. Uh, you know why? Because it's indication. It's an indication. It's a big discussion, you know, between Islamic economists. If you have alternative, you should use it. But if you don't, for recent days. For, for Islamic finance, you assume the money is the money value is constant. Yes, for a long time. For a long time. Yeah, that's right. Which is uh, not going to be the case. You know, for a fact, it's not going to be. The that's case. right. But as I mentioned, here the case different. You use it during the time you using asset. Something to used during the time, although different between currencies, but you use the asset. There, in non-Islamic, totally cash against cash during the time with extra. Okay? But we're going to tell the company, look, uh, go ahead and invest, because I expect this to be profitable. Expecting? Yeah. Expecting. No, I mean, I'm talking about even the, uh, the interest. Uh, the interest, they bought numbers. Uh, what they're going to say is compare the, so the profit that they're going to make from the project with the common expected interest rate in the bank. So they say, relatively speaking, this is going to be a higher return, so I'm going to use, uh, go ahead, I recommend the project. But for Islamic, since you're not using interest rate, you couldn't do that. You know, as indexation, why not? Indexation. No, no, indexation as well. You need... So you're going you're gonna to assume the interest that is coming. Yeah, as index, indexation. As an indexation, here we're calling about, we're talking about buying assets during a period. I want you to evaluate what is your, I mean, benefit later on. No problem. Use any indexation in the market. One of them, labor. Labor. Why not? It's indexation. You know how the labor, we can, we calculate it? It's, it's nine, in short, it's, 11 to 9, they reduce it to 9 famous banks in London. Every single day in the morning, they put numbers okay, of so expecting... You're using, you're using non Islamic banking, essentially. It's indexation. What, what do you think about France. any tool? Any tool, your mobile, you can use it in good or bad. Any tool. Your trouser, you can use it in good and bad. I know, for example, <laughs> the interest rate, or let's say, not, they call it, don't call it interest rate, but K K Rich in Kuwait, the the profit that they give to their customers is essentially the same every year. Ah, this is not according to the bank. This is according to the central bank. It's essentially the same as the. This is because bank. the central bank Plus has. Or minus fraction. This is according to the central bank because every single central bank 
He should arrange the market. So if it is Islamic banking, it should be, it should not be related to he the can, common. He cannot, because then Islam will not allow them. You want to destroy my economy? Just presume you are an Islamic bank. You distribute, the market is 5%. You distribute 7%. What do you expect? If you, if you distribute 7% and the market 5, what do you expect? Billions of dinars will come to you in two hours. What are you going to do with it? And you will break the other banks. So here the role of is the central bank, not the Islamic bank. He's according to the central bank. If it's a free market, okay, they should, I mean, be more and more than the market. But we are not a free market. This so is international regulation. Can it be classified as Islamic banking? Twenty uh, percent, yes. Thirty percent, yes. As I started, we are in non-environment, Islamic environment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much.